Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your uh, lovely cryptid hillbilly host, Larry the Chupacabra, and we're back for some more Dungeon Defenders. It's been a little while since I did the Huntress Showcase, and I figured the next time that I recorded would be for the Warrior Showcase, but, um... Well, I lost the characters that I had prepared for those showcases after the Huntress, so we're just going to continue more of the campaign mode, and we are here on the ramparts outside of the throne room, and we need to defend it from more gobbledygooks and gobbers and wyverns and all that sorts of shenanigans. And I'm joined by my compatriot, Mr. Nephinox, and he is multitasking on different characters, He's currently placing down spike walls on his warrior, which are the best walls to use in the game, although they are a bit more expensive. And they're nice because they have spines on them, so when you slap them with your face, they slap you back. Which is the, uh, the convenient part. And I think that's one of the things I never really did before in any of the series, is, like, we just kind of play with whatever characters we had. But now Mr. Nerpopopolis the Potato Man has got multiple characters of different higher levels, so he can do things like place the anti-air turrets uh, on the Monk, which allow him, well, they're, I mean, they're the best anti-air weapon in the game, because that's the only thing they do. They don't shoot anything that touches the ground. So, we're continuing the story. The previous zone to this was like the, uh... Uh, it was kind of like an entrance to the city where we defended a gate. I did that episode with Mazikazi. And now it's my turn, as the mage, to put down my turrets. So, Neff, why don't you tell the folks at home about the big fancy wipe that pissed us right off while I'm doing this? Oh, um, basically they, uh, deleted everyone's characters, refunded all their, uh, gem purchases, and forced everyone to start back at square one. Yeah, so I like logged in, and I had spent a fair amount of time working on my characters, leveling them up, so I was, um... Would you describe me as fairly pissed off, Neff? I would. I mean, Neff too was fairly, uh, spicy about the whole thing. And I think with good reason, because there was like a user vote. And... Like, every day you log in, you get, like, a certain amount of influence points that you can spend on voting for stuff. And the vast majority of people voted for, well, not the vast majority, but, like, 60% of people voted for a complete wipe. And then, like, almost as many people voted for only a partial wipe. So I was just like, how do, how do you, not more of you want to keep your shit, you, you weirdos? Jesus. So, um, they wiped everything and refunded our premium currency. So, I'm not as spicy as I was, it must be said, because they've, they've kind of improved things in this new Wipegeddon patch, and uh, they've added more story components, like you actually have a big old quest log. Whoops, that's not the right button. You have, like, quest log here, that contains all of your daily missions and your most recent quests. Which is a lot nicer, because before, the issue I always had was... It didn't always seem like you could complete the daily missions, because you had to, like, kill things with your hero. Now it's just, uh, very specific quests, like... Today we only have to kill six special enemies. I presume that means the mini-bosses? I don't have a quest yet. And they also, um, redid how a lot of the stats work, so the characters make a bit more sense now, but we'll get to that, uh, later. So I'm ready to go whenever you are, Neff. Alright, let's do it. So, the story so far in uh, the game is we've been defending the realm against the creatures that have been trying to steal our crystal cart, which is like the crystal left over from the first game's story. And, uh, we've... Basically, the, the armies of goblins and darkness and shenanigans and bullshit have pushed us all the way back into the castle, and we are fighting at the top of the ramparts outside of the throne room, 
And there's a bunch of drop pods here, sending murder in to try and, uh, kill the king and steal that crystal thing that we brought to this kingdom. So, um, you know, all sorts of bad murderiness. And we're stopping it, because the rest of the army is busy trying to keep the goblins from murdering all of the citizens in the world, and citizens are expensive to replace, take a lot of time and effort, and so here we are. We've gotten pushed back to the castle, so I guess technically we're not doing super good. And we just have yeah, to so do... I, th I think so far we've been doing a pretty poor job, because we, we defend and then somehow they still get in. Yeah, we hand it over to, like, the Night Shift, and, like, the Night Shift are all, like, the B-rank heroes that are really shit at their jobs that didn't pass the Hero SAT, the H HSAT. So, like, we, we come back in the morning, we're just like, really, you guys? Freaking really? It's so stupid. Um, we've actually already played through, uh, the existing campaign missions. They're gonna add more, it's just like, we're in pre-alpha still, so there's a limit to how many maps are available, because they're still trying to figure out how all of the stats should work. But that's where we are, and in this map, we're just defending the door controls. There's like a giant magical dragon door protecting the king's throne room, and uh, they're, we, they're like made of fire. And we're also defending this side spawn from being activated because there's this big fancy blue cannon and it's shooting the shit out of uh, the different drop pods that, that keep flying by and they actually kind of look like anglerfish have you noticed that Niff? that the, like the zeppelin things yeah they they do look like fish well, more specifically those lantern fish that have like the little dangle in front of their mouth to lure fish yeah all right, so I guess we pretty much have all the defenses that we need. Let's just upgrade shit. Oh, you already upgraded these down here. Yeah. I started with the bottom, so that way I don't have to pay as much attention to it. Nicely done. I'll upgrade the bottom uh, earth towers that do, like, AoE damage when they put a giant spiky earth dick up through the ground and murder things. One thing that I have noticed is they've done a little bit better job differentiating the different levels of towers. They're not super different, yet. I mean, you can't expect the world from them. But, it's clear from when I just upgraded these that, like, the... the Flame Tower's hoods are bigger. Although... I wish they didn't jitter so bad, like... Frickin' Jitterbug song. b b, -b jitterbug Do do Alright, yeah. I don't know, it's weird. I think it's like, shigga digga 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 I think we're good. Let's, uh, start the next wave. They've also added more, like, uh... So before, I'm sure if people saw Dungeon Defenders 2 footage, they had, like, uh, like a cutscene every time a new enemy got introduced into the game. But there wasn't a whole lot special about the new enemies. They were just kind of there. They appeared, and they did their special new thing. But for the most part, Unless there was a shit ton of other enemies that spawned alongside them, they really weren't all that dangerous or scary. So to change that, although we can't quite see that until one of the bosses spawns in this free play mode, um, there's still the little cutscenes, but now when they spawn for the first time, it's a boss version of the enemy. Like a super souped up powerful version. And in this map, this would be the first time that we see, like, the kamikaze, uh, kobold, like, air bombers that just kamikaze into the defenses. And the first time we were in here, um, that giant phalanx that me and Neff built that he's sitting on right now, it exploded. Uh, two boss, um, kobolds just rammed their faces right into it, and, the, the, like, 90% of those defenses just exploded instantly. Wasn't the best. Um, it did make me poop a little bit. Won't lie. Oh, what is going on here? Spiciness. I guess. Lots of spiciness. So it's cool that they've, over there. they've tried to add a more of like a storytelling component to the game, which is something I definitely complained about before. And that I'm liking so far. And we'll see more of that story stuff 
a little later um, in this evening for me and Neff as we play, but in the next few days for you guys at home, where they actually introduce, over time, some of the different NPCs in the game. So let's get our mana. And then we can uh, start upgrading stuff. They've also added a couple new game mode types, like an endless game mode type, where um, you get rewarded every three waves with delicious things, which we'll eventually check out. And what's the incursion game mode about, Neff? I didn't look into um, that. Um, unless they changed it, which they might have. Um, it used to just have unique bosses that would be more challenging. And there'd also be, like, map-wide effects, like... I believe the incursion effect on this map was there's, um, a summoner, and there'd be healing circles around that would heal all the enemies, and it would make it very difficult to kill them. That sounds like a bitch and a half. Well, it was. At least they're, I mean, they're trying to give you different types of gameplay. And different, like, challenge maps like they had before in the first one, though I'm not certain, like... I don't remember them being super different, but they're trying to, like, mix and match a little bit, which is, again, more stuff that I, not only I, but I think a lot of other people bitched about. Like, it, you know, the, the regular tower defense missions are fine and all, and increased difficulty, but that's not the variety that makes up the spice of life. So, yeah, no, it's it's good. They're, uh, they're, they're swizzling it around. The next game mode that I do predict that they'll add that they don't have right now is they used to have game modes that didn't involve towers that were meant for like challenging hero spec characters that did like hero damage but they didn't do they didn't have an excessive amount of like tower damage or effectiveness so they're probably going to add that pretty soon so that should be nice they've also added additional types of pets like, I'm sure people have probably noticed my weird dragon pet sitting next to me that shoots icy jism at enemies. So they're definitely adding lots of that whole variety thing that I feel like a lot of games need. And here is one of the, the bosses that you can encounter throughout the different levels. They just randomly spawn after you're done with the campaign mode. But you can imagine, like, that as, like, you know a kobold that blows stuff up, or a gigantic orc juggernaut as one of the first ones that sort of represent the bosses as they introduce new characters, which was really kind of cool. So let's murder some more of these bad boys. Some tornado action in here. So the current plan, after we're done kind of previewing what's changed and doing a few challenge maps and chitter-chattering about what they've changed is I will eventually go back and do like the warrior and the monk um sort of showcase series where I go through all of their abilities and stuff um and turns out they like really nerfed the monk and made him more in line with the other characters because I guess for a while he was pretty overpowered he still kind of is from what I've seen a lot of that like the yeah, just use the um Lightning strike aura. Yeah, so the monk is kind of like a mix and match of different classes. He's got like aura traps that he sets down that have like a charge percentage. And they do damage without having to worry about dying to different mobs. And we've been playing some more of what was the name of the endless game mode again? Uh that was Onslaught. Yeah, we've been playing the Onslaught game mode that's good for rewards. And we got in there, and a guy just spawned a couple of warrior um, walls like we've got here. But he also just kind of ran around and put a bunch of monk um, lightning trap aura things. And then it basically just killed everything for us. It was kind of ridiculous. So hopefully they'll work on uh, dealing with that. Because, I mean, in a game like this, you might not think because there isn't a, a PvP component, that that kind of balancing is important. But the trick is, um, you don't want people only playing one or two classes in a game with four, and I, who knows, they might even add additional classes later on. So you, you don't want only one or two classes being played, 
Because that just kills the variety in the game. Because everyone's either a monk or something else, and it's kind of it's kind of silly. Let's get some of this pet food over here. No upgrades for Larry. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't talk about the fact that I'm shooting a book at people. Um, they've added some more weapon models, I think? And the one that I'm currently rocking is a magical tome. It's ancient and priceless. That some yahoo has stuck a stick through. And now it's a staff. And that's fantastic. This knowledge is power. Yes, and I also said that this is the, uh, the same sort of magical weapon that... Um, Lavar, Lamar, Lavar, however you pronounce his name, Lavar Burton from Reading Rainbow uses to shoot the homeless when they wander onto the set. It's fantastic. So the one thing that I don't really do anymore that I used to do in the previous patches is I don't really have a use for, um, the ice turret, which, uh, that's, I guess I can't even put it down, but it's, a uh, the giant ice crystal that hovers above a little platform and it shoots at stuff and it slows them so that the towers have more time to laser them before they get to you. Unfortunately, um, it's a lot easier just to let stuff build up in a giant ball now right at your walls and then let the AoE effect of these fire turrets, which scales up really drastically over time, uh, just go to town on them. It's better to have lots of AoE as opposed to purposeful single-target shooting. Which, I, I think that's a balancing issue, but who knows. I haven't really seen the whole of how they handle, like, the differentiation in specs. But that's another thing, like, the way that you kind of... spec your character, as opposed to a talent tree, is similar to the glyph system for uh, World of Warcraft. Just, you know, for specializing as opposed to just, like, spell perks for your character. But we're gonna go over that next episode, because there's a whole conversation there, and it usually helps to have the people that, like, sell you those upgrades right in front of your face when you say words about it. Let's see, what else is there to go about? I guess we could talk about the story of this game, although there isn't a lot of it yet, and I think that's because yeah, probably it's... a lot of it hasn't been written. Yeah, it's still in the works, I think. But, um, in the previous game of Dungeon Defenders, one, which was very arcadey and really just kind of had a basic story to give a reason why there's hordes of enemy goblins seeking to murder your face and eat your skin, um... Your characters, like the mage, who I'm playing with the yokel skin right now, they were pissing around when their their parents slash trainers slash masters were off in the world doing stuff, and uh, they like they knocked over an ancient crystal, woke it up, and inside of those ancient crystals was an, an ancient evil which wanted to be set free upon the world and murder people, I would imagine. And, uh, yeah, they had to stop it to cover up their mistake. And it seems like that's kind of continued on into this game, where those ancient old ones stuck in that crystal that you start the game out with in, like, that cart, they are still tag-teaming with other evils to try and uh, free themselves and take over the world and murder people, probably enslave them to do weird, um, sex acts to amuse people in circuses. It's just a rude combination. We're not quite as game for that. So, um... We basically brought those crystals to... What is this place called? This, like, uh, this castle? Um, that's a good question. Well, we brought it to this kingdom. Because they're allies of, uh, us. And now it's being attacked, so I'm not entirely certain how keen they are... Uh, on helping us in the future. Which, it might be kind of cool to see them, like, bring that into the story. Like, maybe some political issues that have arisen. But it's hard to say if they will or won't do that. Although, it definitely, even so far, with the way that the NPCs have started to talk with us, which you guys will probably see soon, um, it's cool just to see that, like, they've added just that much story in the first place. 
Let's see. I think we're good down here. Let us do the stuff with the things. Um, these are going to be longer episodes. I've kind of changed on the channel recently to favoring roughly 15 minute episodes. Just because I feel like that's a nice, comfortable time for use on the Chupacabra's Lair. But, um... It doesn't really make sense to start a map in this game and then finish it later, I don't feel. So we're just going to, uh, play each map out and each, uh, episode's gonna have an entire map with all of its waves. Unless it's a super long one, then I might clip it in half. But we're gonna try and keep these pretty car compartmentalized. What do you think? Does that seem like a reasonable plan, Neff? Sounds reasonable. With the exception of Onslaught, which is weird and has, like, endless waves. Yeah, we'll probably play like that for two episodes and then be like, nah, that's enough. Because the other night when we were getting carried by some level, like, max level, level 50 cat guy, uh, we kind of just sat there and AFK'd for five yeah, hours. It it's, was... It's a grindy it's, mess, is what that mm -hmm. is. And I don't know if people know this about Larry. Many people probably do. I'm very anti-grindy anything. So I was a little bit spicy about the whole notion of sitting there grinding out specialty items that you can only get really through Onslaught unless you want to play 50 more games at max level. From uh, what I learned, the uh, golden pets can also be found at like the high-end uh, maps. Okay, so basically... When you go into those Onslaught maps, you're given the option of, like, what kind of loot rewards would you like every so many waves? And most people go with pets, because good pets are hard to come by, and there's a specialty type of pet that can spawn in there with a higher rate, um, called the Golden Pet, which is just like the regular pets, it's just gold. Do you have yours right now, Neff? Come here. Yeah, I have it. Let me... So basically, it just looks like the other ones, but it's just, it's gold. Um, I think that's kind of lame. Like, I, we, me and Neff both feel like it would look better if it was just, like, accented with golden colors. Because otherwise it's like Smite, that, like, third-person MOBA, where, uh, it looks like they just lazily recolored it gold as opposed to actually putting in modeling work. Which is fine if they intend to change it, but if they don't, I call shenanigans. Because that's some, that's some bullshit right there. But, you know, I'm not exactly paying for this, for any more of the content that they've added. I actually got Dungeon Defenders on a sale. And eventually it's going to be a free-to-play title that you don't have to pay for ever. But we'll explain what's going on with that uh, in the next episode, when we're in the lobby that isn't full of people. So I guess I'm ready to... Oh yeah, you're ready to go too, sweet. <laughs> Let us do the sings. Do we have a boss this wave? Uh, yeah, but I don't know where it's coming from. I didn't check. Neither did I. Good we're not, for us. We're not being super efficient hosts, let Neff. We're, we're being no. pretty lazy. Yeah, you know. That's pretty part of the course for us here at the Chupacabra's Lair. All of my effort goes into the, to the post-editing and stuff for videos. And maybe checking it out ahead of time. Not so much the actually min-maxing during. So let's see here. We got some more golden piggies. I'll explain why those are appearing in large volumes later. So the thing that I really like about sort of the current paradigm of defending in this game is um, these earth towers right here, they basically slam the ground and they spawn these giant spines that murder the shit out of everything. And they do a massive amount of AoE damage. Unfortunately, they shoot rather slowly. So you gotta really only put like one or two and have a lot of other towers that can take the brunt of it for you. We've also got some new enemy types that we didn't have before, like these annoying beetles. Those little glow worm slash beetle creatures that kind of look like fireflies. They fly overhead and they just laser everything in the face. They're really annoying. They're the whole reason why we have one or two anti-air towers roaming around to deal with them. Although there is a fun thing about the anti-air towers. If you knock something up into the air, 
It counts as an air target while it's in the air, and the uh, the anti-air turrets will shoot the shit out of them, which I thought was neat. Oh, and here's another new character, a lady orc. And how how did I describe that previously, Neff? It's like uh, the internet finding out that somebody in their party is a woman. Like, oh, it's a lady orc. Oh. That was kind of cheesy, but I got a good kick out of it. All right, so that was been the uh, the ramparts. We'll continue this uh, next episode where we check out the throne room, and uh, once we're done with the can, ooh, I got a blue chest, sweet. Once we're done with all of that, uh, we'll check out the other game modes, and probably do some more like uh, showcasing of other classes and stuff as we play through more. Dungeon Defenders 2 and Early Access, pre-alpha stuff. And uh, that's it for this one, everybody. Catch you next time. Tootaloo!